All right. For some reason, I think a lot of us are like this, especially if you're a software developer. Game programming is just like a completely different world. I'm fascinated by it, so I can't wait to hear about this next talk. So uh, Chris will be uh, talking to us about uh, using MongoDB for massive multiplayer online games. Um, and uh, this talk should be about 20, 25 minutes maybe, so if you have questions, please keep them for the end. I'll be running around to uh, hand you the mic if you have any questions. So with that, please give a warm welcome to Chris Hope from Kabam Games. Okay, I can hear myself now. Um, hello everyone, my name is Chris. Um, I'm an engineer from Kaban, and uh, I'm gonna talk to you about MongoDB and how it power our massive multiple player online games. Um, and, uh, but uh, first, I want to talk to you a little bit about ourselves, Kaban, who we are. We are a mobile, company, mobile game company, maker of uh, Marvel Contest of Champion. Disney Mirrors and Shop Titan. And uh, our uh, most uh, flagship game costs around 270 million players. And uh, MongoDB has been a solid backend for us, uh, for us to doing that. And uh, one of the challenges is we have to host 20,000 consecutive players any given time. Right? So as you can see, we making, game, making a fun game is not our only challenge. Um, the, but also you know, making them fast and reliable. So today I want to see, talk to you uh, about how Mongo does that for us and more on the, um, you know, uh, the, how the people help us rather than the product because I, I bet you guys uh, heard a lot about the product in other uh, sessions. So I'll, I'll speak to you about our journeys, um, how MongoDB, uh, the people, help us through the journey. Um, in the beginning, we uh, we choose MongoDB as our stop, and uh, later on, we um, I'll talk to you about how we migrated to Atlas, the challenges that we faced um, migrating to Atlas. Believe me, there, there were some challenges. And uh, once we were on, on Atlas, um, how do we get our optimization on there and, uh, and benefit us? And uh, now we are at the phase of a uh, new game and uh, pre-production um, environments. I'll speak to you a little bit about that too. So in the beginning, uh, when we were start up, but I, I bet a lot of you have been start up before, um, we, we have to choose a DB. Um, Mongo came to mind because for game programmers, um, a document-based database is natural for us to, to, uh, to use rather than relational ones. And uh, as a you know, small startup, being free and the open source, it's really key to us, um, and uh, we, in the beginning, every engineer in, in the company call ourselves programmers. So, it's, so as that, you can see that we have little operation engineer in the in the in the company. So, we being Mongo, the characteristic that we can we can um, we can identify all the, our indexes and the schema in the code is really a key because we, then we don't need to run any uh, setup script or anything for, for, the, for, for spinning up the cluster. So, um, and uh, one last thing, we, for uh, characters of games, uh, when we launch, usually we have a large spike of traffic in the beginning and we need to be able to host that and uh, Mongo has been known for scaling, so that's what also why we choose Mongo. But um, when later on, when our game become a hit, um, it was a top hit, and uh, we faced all the challenges that all startup, you know, successful startup that will uh, faces, which is uh, scale, um, reliability under scale. Um, so what happened was our primary, primary nodes keeps going down on our DB layer, um, the reason being sometimes there's an um, um, unindexed query causing un you know, collection scans. Um, it will cause like, hardware failure we, in terms of like we looking to our DB configuration optimization, which is all very hard. And uh, sometimes even with uh, underneath network uh, with some flip, the primary not able to talk to the secondary, the the connection was lost, and the you know, primary was step down, and uh, and the secondary comes up. It caused a problem to us because uh, our 
our application layer, when it cannot connect to the database, it will you know, fail and uh, restart, and uh, in turn, it will ca do a cascading failure down the stream to our uh, players, so they won't be able to come in and uh, pile the, the, the traffic. Um, so, but, uh, um, so we, uh, okay, uh, some more, uh, sorry. So we, this is when we decided we probably need to invest more on the uh, database layer, database operation. Right. Um, you know, even our CTO had to write a you know manual on how to fix MongoDB, and uh, all, some of our engineer feel their full time job is babysit the, the cluster. So we, we thought like uh, we should have more professional people looking after it rather than you know game programmers looking at DBs. So this is when we decide to migrate to Addis, the hosted solution. I bet you guys all heard about it. Um, but later now I will talk to you about how. When we moved to others, what kind of challenges that we face? In the beginning, there was a networking challenge that we are able, not able to use the tool connecting to the um, database, uh, the, the migration tool. And uh, later on, we the product production team had to give us a, a requirement of fallback cluster uh, for rolling back strategy, and we did that. Uh, at the end, I will, say, uh, I will also tell you about a, a temporary collection usage that we do. Pretty interesting for uh, game purpose. And uh, yeah. Um, so, live migration. Um, by the time we try to migrate to others, our data has become 14 terabyte. And uh, yeah, it was massive and uh, for, you know, for millions of users. So, to migrate all this data cross cloud, cloud from our on prem to others cloud, it takes three days to just to move the data, right? So we couldn't, you know, take the game down and say you know, no, no play for, for three days, right? So, so we had to uh, use the, so the, the solution architect back then gave us uh, this uh, um, um, tool called live migration. It was good. It, uh, it sits behind, between our cluster on prem and uh, others uh, cluster. We wide this this service and come in our cluster to replicate the data between the old the original and the destination cluster. So, the, but the first problem we faced was um, firewall. Right? Uh, in, internally, people usually we set up the the cluster by. Um, private DNS zone, so you know people, the, the outside traffic can come in and snoop our data, right? But uh, this is, but when the live traffic, sorry, live migration uh, tool comes in, they couldn't resolve the resolve the the private private um, not private IPs. So what we did was uh, what was proposed to us for the solution architect was uh, do a split horizon. So we have. Um, Private DNS lookup, also for uh, DN, uh, public ones. Uh, so that way, the you know, internally they, we can still serve the traffic, and externally we can replicate the data. So later on, now we are on, with the live migration tools uh, uh, are going. Um, um, I, w I want to talk to you about uh, 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 um, yeah the I mentioned about the the time taken to migrate is not. Trivial, right? So we, the production team need to make sure if we migrate to add this, we can come back to on-prem if there's any problem, right? We need to be safe. Um, so what we set up was we, when we did the migration tool forward to the target cluster, takes two, three days. We, the the uh, consultant engineer, Mark, he come to us and uh, help us set up a, a Mongo mirror Sinking back to our rollback cluster, that take another three days, and uh, during, and then we took even the longer time to observe the data, if it's uh, healthy for another week. So altogether, this uh, in, uh, experience was a, 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 a couple of weeks, and uh, we were able to do that without making the you know the redundant loop of uh, sinking back and forth forward just one uh, between two cluster, and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, Quite in intensive of uh, operation, you know, uh, for for our, for our um, uh, migration. Um, so, but when we are my, my, uh, running the migration tool, one of the things that came up was uh, when the migration tool was running, it kept saying like uh, we have a, a move chunk command that is causing shard map not matching. Um, 
here I want to share a little bit about the, the game development. Um, so what this is what, what happened was we have a game mode called events. Uh, you, if you guys play uh, online games, uh, there's things like uh, like that. Like we create some event in some time. For example, Monday we allow uh, people come in uh, from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock and compete in that time and uh, get on the leaderboard and uh, get some prizes at the end. So as you can imagine, this is a time sensitive um, uh, game mode gets user to come in and uh, you know play in a short period of time. So the right traffic spikes up. So we need to be able to handle that. What we did was we uh, create a, what we manually create, not manually, we, we uh, use a, you know, a cron job to create a collection per uh, event, and uh, we shard them live before they, the, the event starts. Say uh, event starts at 10, we you know, shard them at night. And uh, so the reason doing that is we want to make sure all the, uh, when the right traffic comes in, they go into all the shards that we av we have available, so all the hardware resources are utilized, not just you know propagating to one and uh, and then have a meltdown. But that creates a problem of move, uh, move chunk because when we you are making a shard shark collection, there's a move chunk command to moving the chunk migrate, and uh, but the the problem is the source destination doesn't know the the, the destination cluster doesn't know the shard map, so it will fail. We, this is the first time we reach out to a support engineer. I think uh, they also call technical service engineers. And uh, we gave them, gave them the, you know, huge amount of logs and uh, they were able to pinpoint to exactly where the, 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 the uh, problem is, which what command we are using. So we, in terms, we'd be able to, to uh, see where the problem is. Um, this is very refreshing for a vendor because uh, we, when, you, when we usually uh, reach out to vendor, what we get is always um, you know, fix your code or, um, you know, or, or you know, upgrade your cluster. So, but this time it's really refreshing. They even, ping, they ping, after pinpoint to where our problem is, they also give us some options of uh, you know, how to solve the problem. Um, you know, we can either upgrade the cluster to 4.0 or having some pre-sharded -pre collection beforehand so they can um, use that afterwards. So avoiding the, the shard map. Um, so yeah, now we are on Atlas. Um, I will talk to you about some of the benefits that we have. One of the very intuitive uh, first one was backup. Um, in, 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 um, when we are on print, we have great backup strategy. We were confident we back up everything. We have all the snapshot taken, but we were never confident that we can restore. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that's the thing for you, but uh, we, the, the problem is being like for, for, uh, for others, we, um, for Mongo, we have 25 shards. And uh, each have then have three nodes for replica set. So together they are 75 uh, uh, nodes and plus some configuration servers. So you know 70, 80 ish servers you need to back up for. Um, you need to take the snapshot at the same time to make sure they are you know same, same in sync. It's really you know we 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 were never sure we uh, we are doing that correctly. Um, but for others, now we are on others, it's all under the hood for us. We don't need to care about that. We just, what we need to do is when we need a backup is just select uh, 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 the, the, the snapshot that we need and, uh, and back up to the original cluster or you can even um, spin up new cluster to, uh, to restore the, the data too. And we, we have been utilizing that a lot um, before, before on-prem, before we were on-prem, when there was a production data loss, uh, what we have to do is to always work backward to reconstruct the data because we were not confident of backup. But now, you know, every, anytime if there's a production data loss, we can just go back and uh, spin up the data, the, the cluster, not costing us too much money, but saving us a ton of time. Um, yeah, another benefit, sorry, this one. Remember we was, I was talking to you about our cluster goes down all the time, and uh, that one of the, the problem was uh, retry. 
we did not have a great, we did not enable retry on the database layer. We had, we, we had it on our application layer, but that being the problem, so not being able to get reconnect to the server. So now we try to have it on the cluster, on the database level. But once we turn on the database layer, uh, it was, we, we, the support engineer again come, to, come up to us saying, Your, our upload is growing exponentially big and it's taking us, our, our, our cluster upload is a file that is uh, you know, t taking history of the operations for all your databases, uh, but it's getting so big, it's eating up your, uh, your disk space. So what happened was we are doing a lot of find and modify in our code. Um, a lot of them is a no up. What happened was we were trying, one of the function we were using, it was using the database as a queue uh, data structure. So first thing first out, we uh, keep poking the queue to see if there's any uh, data left. Um, but, but if there's not, we don't need to work. Um, but the problem is, for to enable the retry on database layer, the the database need to capture the the original document in the upload. So in case there's any you know, retry need to happen, they can go back, they can restore the data. But uh, for no ops, you don't need to do that because we, there's no document before, right? But uh, so we reach out to their actual production engineer for Mongo. Um, they see our use case. They you know uh, they, they were very helpful. File a server Jira ticket for us and uh, wrote the flag, uh, wrote in the solution having a flag for you know uh, some of the the uh, 4.0 releases and uh, we were able to utilize that. Uh, we were super proud of that uh, experience because we uh, one of this is one of the chance we are able to commit um, contribute back to Mongo um, community with our own use cases. So it was great. So now we are on others and our existing cluster is healthy and uh, very reliable. We are ha we're super happy. We want to create more games. Now our, we are talking to our solution architect to see you know, how do we uh, do size analyzation for the new and the old existing cluster with, uh, and, and in terms of doing customization. So people think uh, when you get on most managed servers, you co it costs you more money, but uh, actually with our customization, you can save you some money too. This is the graph that when you uh, get on others, so you can see your, your workload, you can see some spikes and uh, uh, some anomalies. And uh, so it's hard to digest. The solution architect helped us in the way that giving us a, 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 a you know, snapshot to see how our memory is being used um, with where the index is, is and uh, what's the hard document living in the memory and uh, how it in interact with your, with your file system, written back your file system with cache, um, all, all, all that. And uh, in turn, then, then later on come out with a uh, you know, um, scaling solution for us to you know, save money, right? Either we can upscale, downscale vertically to beefy machine or, you know, or we can have horizontal scaling, have more or less hardware footprint. We choose the one which, which makes sense for us with horizontal downscale, and uh, that gave us the opportunity if there's a spike of traffic in some time, like if we our game need to uh, have a sudden spike, uh, vertical, vertically upscale is much faster than horizontal, so we were able to choose that. And uh, yeah. That's it for, 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 for me. And uh, so we're looking forward to, uh, to work more with MongoDB to have our, more of our game online um, for Mongo. And um, hopefully you guys uh, check out some of our game while you have it too. That's it. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Chris. I love hearing those stories about the scalability of MongoDB and like 75 cluster or, um, yeah, clusters and it's just like <laughs> Do we have any questions for Chris? There is one over there. Let me run and I'll be back to you. Uh, so uh, I, I saw you were migrating data back and forth between cloud, Atlas, and on-prem MongoDB. Uh, just wondering, I mean, was it frictionless? Uh, apart from the time it takes, you know, to move the data, 
between these two environments? So migrating, yeah, great question. Migrating forward was, we had the problem of DNS, so we solved that. It was, the live migration tool is great for that. Migrating back is more manual because it's the Mango Mirror tool, um, yeah, it's a self-running uh, tool. It's open source on online. Um, but there's like you need to babysit some of the sharding map uh, to see where the the, the the data is going. We we were fortunate. We the, the consultant engineer was there to help us along the way to to make sure it all working. So when it, we do practice runs with with that in our uh, in our staging and in, in in production too. So not very frictionless, but uh, it was interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, and I, there are some other questions more over here. Hi, so you mentioned that the entire process was live. The game was still live when you were doing the migration. Yes. And you said that each uh, copy or well, I guess whatever the process was took several days to complete. How did you deal with um, like changes in, like, I probably missed the slide, but like, because there's still data coming in, right? So yes. How did you deal with that? Okay. So, thank you. Uh, I think it's almost live. So when we have to switch, we need to actually change the, the, the connection string and we need to take it down for a couple minutes. That was fine. So almost live. But uh, yeah, moving the data back and forward take days. But the way we are able to keep the data in sync is the um, change string for, and then upload, right? For when you turn on the uh, live migration, it. What it does is it watches your original clusters as uh, uplock and uh, you know watches all your replications uh, um, you know data and uh, you know and and, and uh, once all the data is there it keeps it in sync to see all the data and keep you know writing it back to the destination. Same thing for Mongo Mirror. It also watches the uplock and uh, you know uh, keep keep uh, up um, keep the cluster in sync. So that's why we couldn't have you know, one source and one destination and writing back and forth because they will be keep writing to each other. So there's a three way. Yeah. Thank you. There's another question here. Uh, how do you handle processing of uh, real time data? Um, can you uh, elaborate like uh, in like for migration or? Uh, uh, so for example, like uh, player chats, uh, like real time data between, you, I'm not sure if it's multiplayer games. Yep, okay. I, no, I, yeah, for games, yeah, real time data is definitely a challenge. We have several different things for, for okay, I'll just be for chat. We have a, you know, a, 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 a web socket connecting with uh, our players to our, ourselves. And uh, the data is, um, we have different layers. We have like um, in memory cache and uh, and Redis cache and uh, then then Mongo. The source of the truth is in Mongo, so so you know people, other players can can come in and uh, see the chat. Um, but in uh, in the other sense, for for real time playing uh, strategy, like we um, it's we we have the fight in in each uh, playing nodes, and uh, when the f fight is finished, then we return back to uh, Mongo. So because. For real time, we the, the latency need to be sub millisecond so fast. You know, Mongo is very fast enough, but if it, we need to keep writing it, it couldn't it probably couldn't keep up. So we write it at the end of each session. That's how we do. It. So what type of data you're storing there? Mongo versus uh, you mentioned Redis. Redis is more mainly um you know uh, the inferno data. Um, so. For example, like uh, chat in temporary or or, or some um, um, yeah uh, history of uh, conversations, um, but all the data actually is in Mongo. So if there's a loss in uh, data in metric, uh, Redis, it will, it is able to retrieve back uh, back from from Mongo. Um, some of the temporary data that we. Uh, for example, is like if we want to search for all the users, it's lot users like 20 million, 200 million, right? So we couldn't you know go back to Mongo all the time for that. So we keep a you know small footprint of it in Redis, and uh, you know retrieve that. But it doesn't find it, then you go back to Mongo to get it, right? Okay, good. So yeah, Redis is really like a caching. More more like cache, yeah, memory cache. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks Thank for the question. We have time for one last question.
This is a fast one. Oh, what, what game engine do you use? We, uh, that's a good, good question. Uh, so yeah, we f do a lot more and more focus on game engine. So um, we, more majority, are, we are more a uh, Unity game shop, uh, you know, game Unity shop. But um, we do have uh, Unreal coming up with some of our newer games too. So right now, are more on Unity, but um, Unreal is coming up too. All right. Well, thank you very much, Chris, for this yeah. uh, great session. Thank you.